All right. Well, uh, LIC doing a relative outperformance. So let's take that discussion forward. We have Sudeep Pabandupadai who joins in. Sudeep, LIC, you know, plenty of chatter came out of the issue of 950. If you're a policyholder, you've got a bit of a discount. If you're a retailer, you've got a bit of a discount. You, know, you didn't like it at 900. You didn't like it at 800. What about at 700? Do you think uh, there is value out there or is it in a void? Good afternoon, Nigel. I think, yeah, definitely I like it at the current levels. Uh, but I have to decide what my time horizon is. If I'm going to be in a hurry, uh, you know, to uh, kind of uh, make money, I don't think this is the counter for me. But if I'm going to be a little patient and I want to be in the, this particular sector, I think it's a great buy at current levels. Uh, yes, uh, there has been challenges since LIC got listed because market started going down. And, uh, you know, they, they, along with the market, LIC also corrected. But I think historically, Nigel, we've seen that uh, LIC has been buying uh, uh, shares uh, cheap when the markets tank. And this is what helps them in making big profit uh, when the market uh, moves up. And this is, uh, they've been doing time and again. And I think uh, uh, probably this time is also not going to be an exception. We understand that they bought a good quantity of HUL and HERO at lower levels. And I'm sure uh, many other stocks, and uh, I'm sure going forward, the shareholders who are entering at current levels will benefit uh, out of their holding in LIC. Uh, the only matter of concern is uh, their group business is excellent, but the non-group business, uh, they need to uh, do much better uh, compared to what they are doing so that they can really catch up on competition. Mm. Oh, no, absolutely. Uh, 33 points uh, lower is what the Nifty is uh, down by, 15,700. Uh, is uh, where we are uh, trading at. Uh, Sudeep, uh, Reliance has been uh, sort of down, up, now back down again, back at 2600. Anything you're hearing here? Uh, because, uh, you know, the uh, numbers in terms of the refining side, etc., should be very, very strong. Uh, but uh, your thoughts, Reliance? Good afternoon, Prashant. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. I, we expect, uh, you know, historically high refining margins for this quarter. And pretty much uh, that's uh, uh, going to happen because Singapore GRMs are at uh, kind of all-time high. So Reliance also should uh, benefit significantly. Uh, also remember, uh, we have started uh, getting Russian crude and this is a complex crude and uh, Reliance has the capacity and competence to refine that crude and Reliance only has that capacity. So I think that's also going to work in its favor. Now, leave aside for a minute the refining business, uh, uh, the, 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 the other two newer businesses, which is the uh, telecom as well as retail. Now, as far as telecom is concerned, we are pretty sure the benefit of our two increase is going to be reflected in uh, this quarter's numbers. So we are going to see a fantastic uh, uh, result from the telecom uh, business. As far as retail is concerned, last quarter we had seen some lockdowns and closures and things like that. But this quarter, uh, you know, hopefully will be an uninterrupted quarter. So again, uh, the retail numbers should be good. So this uh, June quarter is going to be an excellent quarter for Reliance. And we are positive on Reliance. Uh, yes, uh, you know, of course, there is a lot of this turbulence in the market caused by multiple uh, challenges, which we are all talking about. And that's the reason I think there has been uh, some profit booking, some you know, uh, selling pressure on Reliance as well. But fundamentally, there is absolutely nothing wrong. And, uh, you know, uh, one of these corrections, one should go and start buying Reliance because that's going to help uh, them build their portfolio. Sudeep, so uh, you know, I don't know whether you're a gambling man, but uh, Delta Corp, you know, Nimesh was just telling us a few minutes back that there's a large investor out there who's cutting their stake and in all probability may want to exit. Uh, so there is some supply overhang out there. The stock is down close to 4% as we speak. And from the peak, I think of more than 323.30 rupees odd, it's down to around 175 rupees. Any view on this one? Well, I will be a little cautious, uh, Nigel. Uh, at, at this stage, there is some uh, selling going on. And, uh, you know, uh, Nilesh must be right because some investors must be offloading. I don't know at what stage of offloading they are in. So probably there will be some more pain before uh, the thing counter stabilizes. Uh, overall, I think uh, this unlock theme should play well out for 
uh, you know, companies like Delta. But at this stage, there is too much of, uh, you know, uh, counter-specific uh, selling happening in Delta. So I will avoid uh, Delta at this stage. You know, uh, Nigel, we've been uh, sort of uh, focused on the Fed. Hmm. Uh, there is a uh, ECB uh, emergency meeting. Yeah. Uh, the announcement came, I think, earlier today. But it is on right now, uh, the European Central Bank emergency meeting. I mean, it's uh, funny because the ECB is so far behind the curve uh, in terms of raising rates to be anywhere near to where inflation is. I mean, it's far behind the curve as compared to the Fed even. And they're calling an emergency meeting uh, to control what they describe as uh, fragmentation in the Eurozone, which is nothing but, I mean, a fancy way to describe the fact that, uh, you know, what the monetary policy there is uh, attempting to do is not getting passed on evenly to all the member countries. Uh, so that is uh, described as fragmentation. Uh, uh, the, the, pro the problem has been that as monetary tightening is taking hold very strongly, uh, you know, some of the peripheral bond markets, uh, like Italy, for example, which perennially has been Portugal, Italy, and some of the other EU members on the periphery, bond deals there have been shooting through the roof to, uh, to about 200, 250 basis points in some cases, which is considered the pain threshold for the ECB. Uh, so the question really is, what will the ECB with this emergency meeting? It's scheduled to last for uh, two hours, start at 2.30 p.m. our time, so we should have the decision by 4.30 or so, maybe a little after that. Uh, but the question is, what can they do? They're just about starting embarking on the process of tightening, and here they are holding emergency meeting to address the market turmoil. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's strange and uh, a little bit bizarre maybe, but that's what's happening. The problem, though, uh, Nigel, is if, you know, uh, when you call an emergency meeting to do something hmm. and you don't, you know, flex your muscles, whatever your muscles you have left in whatever way, I mean, then the market can take you to the cleaners. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's that's the other thing. So, I mean, we keep an eye on the uh, Fed, but I think it's also extremely uh, important uh, to watch what happens out of the out of the ECB. Well, I mean... You know, it's it's just so sudden. Uh, you know, you start to do something, and now you you, mm. you sort of already starting to deal with the implications when you've not started to actually do what you said you will, which is increase rates and stop asset purchases, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if if Sudeep has a view here. Sudeep, uh, come in if you do. Well, Prashant, uh, you know, uh, this was probably uh, uh, in, on the cards. Uh, not not that this emergency meeting. But I think they have been uh, uh, light years behind in terms of uh, monetary action. Uh, you know, they haven't just done anything, and now they are talking about starting in July, mid-July, and the next step being in, uh, you know, in sometimes in September. Uh, so I think, and and the bond purchase program hasn't been reduced. They have uh, to do something, and I think, you know, the fringe countries uh, probably. Fringe is not the right word. The, the 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 smaller countries and the smaller economies are. Uh, you know, trying to do things which are different and the markets are behaving in a weird manner. So, uh, you know, it's high time they do something and they do something uh, concrete and meaningful. Mm. Yeah, the last time when the Fed, all eyes were on the Fed, the RBI spun a surprise. <laughs> this time around, ECB seems to have taken, uh, you know, a cue and said, let me steal the thunder first, just <laughs> on a lighter note. Well, we have only 10 minutes of trading left. For the time being, we'll slip into a short break. But before we do that, Money Control Pro, well, they're celebrating the third anniversary with special offers. Get a Money Control Pro subscription at just 365 rupees for one year and avail of offers of more than 1 lakh rupees.